Madam Secretary, welcome. Thank uh, you. And I want to join my colleagues in thanking you for your extraordinary service to the country at a time when uh, the Middle East is in turmoil. We have a succession going on in North Korea, new challenges from Iran, uh, rising leadership from China. Having your steady hand at the tiller of the ship of state is a great comfort to uh, all of us. Uh, we were enormously proud of the very strong uh, remarks you made um, on the Syrian crisis uh, and well-deserved criticism you leveled at uh, Russia and China for their complicity in the ongoing violence. But set against this uh, stellar record of achievement uh, are some actions that uh, we're taking by you and the administration with regard to the Armenian genocide that are of great concern. Uh, I can't begin to express uh, in mere words how much anguish has been caused in the Armenian American community and among many human rights activists about uh, recent statements uh, at a State Department town hall uh, that you made. In 1951, while the experience of the Holocaust was still uh, tragically fresh, the United States uh, issued this statement at the International Court of Justice uh, it was the statement of the United States government on the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of Genocide, and it said, the Roman persecution of the Christians, the Turkish massacres of Armenians, the extermination of millions of Jews and Poles by the Nazis are outstanding examples of the crime of genocide. Uh, again, in the 1980s, President Reagan recognized the Armenian genocide, as did the Congress, and as recently as uh, just a few years ago, <clears throat> both uh, both U.S. Senator and our President as Senator spoke unequivocally of the Armenian Genocide. Your comments were very powerful. Um, the horrible events perpetrated by the Ottoman Empire against Armenians constitute a clear case of genocide, you said. Our common morality and our nation's credibility as a voice for human rights challenge us to ensure that the Armenian Genocide be recognized and remembered by the Congress and the President of the United States. But last month, uh, you made some very different statements uh, and said, I think it's fair to say that this has always been viewed and I think properly so as a matter of historical debate and conclusions rather than political. And I think that this is the right posture for the U.S. government to be in because whatever the terrible event might be or the high emotions that it represents to try to use government power to resolve historical issues, I think, opens a door that is very dangerous to go through. This is uh, tragically very much the line of the Turkish government. Uh, and many in the Armenian community are wondering how we could go from such a powerful position in the State Senate, such a powerful position that we took uh, decades ago before the International Court of Justice, the powerful voice that uh, President Reagan brought to this issue to where we were last month. Um, and I want to ask you, is there any question uh, that you have that the facts of uh, that tragic period between 1915 and 1923 constitute genocide. Uh, do you have any different view on the subject now than you, do at, than you did as a, state, as a U.S. Senator? Well, Congressman, you know, you quoted um, something that I said in response to a question about France trying to criminalize uh, speech about this uh, terrible event in history. Uh, and I do think criminalizing speech is a dangerous path to go down. And in fact, as I understand it, the French courts just declared that law unconstitutional under the French Constitution. Uh, so let me be very clear. The United States recognizes the events of 1915 as one of the worst atrocities of the 20th century. And every April 24th, the President honors the victims and expresses American solidarity with the Armenian people. And the President has said in his Remembrance Day statements uh, that the achievement of a full, frank, and just acknowledgement of the facts of what happened is in everyone's interest. He's also said that the best way to advance that goal is for the Armenian and Turkish people to address the facts of the past as a part of their effort to move forward. And President Obama, like presidents before him, strongly supports the efforts of Turkey and Armenia to normalize their bilateral relations. Madam, uh, so we, we believe uh, Secretary, that this is a position that uh, fully reflects the uh, terrible events of 1915, but also is aimed at trying to uh, create a climate I'm, in which I these two peoples and nations can move forward together. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I, I'm going to run out of time. And, and um, no one is quarreling with a position against criminalizing speech in this country. No one is advocating that. 
But, but that's what the answer you quoted from was well, responding to in well, terms but, of the but, question, but, Congressman. But, so I just want to make Madam the record Madam straight. Madam Secretary, I, I want to keep the record straight, too. Your answer went well beyond whether it should be criminalized. Your answer said this is a matter of historical debate. And that is what is causing so much anguish uh, in the community. Uh, and it's not just anguish. There is a very concrete injury, which we saw last week uh, with a tragic Ninth Circuit decision that said that the victims of genocide cannot bring claims for relief under California law because it is preempted by a federal position of non-recognition of the genocide. Uh, so let me ask one last question. Uh, is it the position of the State Department that states should be prevented from allowing redress to victims of genocide? Is there a federal policy to preempt insurance claims uh, that victims might bring in states for relief that have suffered as a result of genocide? Well, I will, I'll take that for the record, Congressman. Um, I'm well aware of the Ninth Circuit uh, decision, uh, and I can only uh, reiterate and underscore that uh, it is certainly the policy of this administration uh, that uh, there has to be steps taken between the Armenian and Turkish people and between the two governments, uh, between them as to how to create a peaceful, productive, prosperous uh, relationship and that is, uh, you know, in our view, a very important goal to uh, bring about the normalization of relations for future generations of Armenians and uh, Turks. I have to go on to Mr. Cole now. <clears throat> Mr. Cole. 